Hey guys, this <laughs> we're live here on Way Too Indie Hangouts. Uh, Way Too Indie Hangouts. Uh, I think we're gonna call this for now Way Too Indie Reacts. Uh, yeah. And this react episode is about Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones premiered its season five uh, season tonight, and we just watched it, and we are gonna talk about it. I'm joined today by Ananda Dillon. Hello. Yes. What's up? <laughs> Um, it's that, that that lull that you get after you've been waiting so long for something, and then it happened, and you're like, I'm really good now, I guess. I'm There's nothing else to look forward to, except for the rest of the season, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it seems like forever since season four. I was watching, they show the little, like, what happened previously section at the beginning. I was like, that happened last season? It, it yeah. seemed like ten years ago. <laughs> I know. I rewatched just the last episode, and it felt like I would watched it, like, well, I mean, I had watched it a year ago. It just seemed a lot longer than that. Um, just to get fresh, you know, refreshed in my head what happened exactly. But, yeah, here we are. Here we are. And before I get into it, I have to mention, uh, we, Ananda and I both watched the episode on HBO Go. But uh, I watched it a little before you, Ananda. And mm -hmm. I watched it right. It was supposed to start. It was supposed to be up on HBO Go right at 6 p.m. Pacific, which is where we were. We're both from California. And yeah. so I, we, I got on at 6 p.m. Pacific, and me and my wife, Jessica, who's an even huger fan than I am, for sure, uh, mm -hmm. were freaking out because it wasn't on HBO Go. It was not on there at 601, 602, uh, yeah, 6 I noticed that. Still not on there. Uh -huh. and, uh, we were, everyone's freaking out. I went on Twitter, and people were flipping the hell out. This uh, happened and, last year, too. Yeah. yeah. I don't know yeah. how they have not amended that is it a server issue? I, I don't know, but but, but uh, you know this is like you know someone on Twitter said that it's like entitled millennials, millennial bullshit. So maybe uh, they do it on purpose. They want people with cable to feel like they've still got some tiny little like edge on the rest of us. <laughs> but it's like no, you don't. You're paying a ton of money, and I've got HBO Go, so whatever. That's true. I don't feel bad about it. I'll wait a couple extra minutes. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, it finally started, and uh, the show started off with a flashback with Cersei uh, as a young girl, and she uh, stumbles into a little hut of a witch in a forest mm -hmm. uh, outside of, uh, where, where was it? Well, I don't even know where the fuck they were, but... <laughs> wherever they grew up, I forget. Yeah, wherever they grew up. I guess... Castle um, Rock? Yeah, Castle Rock. Kessley Rock. So, um, the, and this witch tells her this prophecy, and it seems to be hinting that it's a prophecy about uh, some woman stealing everything away from her. She's like Cersei's going to become queen, but oh, some woman's going to take everything. A younger woman. A younger woman, and uh, you know, there's a it's hit, there's a hint that uh, Marjorie might be that woman. I feel like a pretty uh, strong hint. <laughs> I don't think it's Marjorie. Who do you think it is? Who do you think? Danny, of course. You think so? Uh, yeah, I think it's Danny. I like that there's so many women who are in play right now, though, that it could be a younger woman could mean a couple people, so... That's true. Stan That's Sansa's it. out there, Star Arya's out there, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of ladies out there. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's going to be... Well, at least I think in the episode it hints that uh, Cersei is thinking it may be Marjorie. Oh, uh, yeah, She's yeah, staring at her. That's what she's saying. <laughs> That's not I, what I think, but that's what she thinks. Right, right. I, I, yeah. I told my wife as we were watching that I think uh, mm -hmm. Lena Headey has the bitchiest mouth I've ever seen. The way she yes. cocks her mouth to the side. <laughs> no, she's... I would not want to mess with her. Uh, that girl, though, that played her in the flashback, how good is she? Like, that she's girl right. nailed her as a kid. Like, I believed it. Like, you know they don't really tell you, like, at first who you're seeing or yeah. if it's a flashback, but the second she started talking and was like, you don't have to fear my father, I was like, damn, that's Cersei as a kid. <laughs> yeah, it was. So, yeah, it, it was great. I love that flashback. I think it was a really cool way to start the season as well because we're, we're, it's a little uh, disorienting and we don't know what's, it's mysterious. We don't know what's going on at first and it was really beautifully shot. Uh, but anyways, there's, we got to get to the other stuff that went on in the episode. Uh, we've got Daenerys, of course, Danny. Uh, uh -huh. Miss Khaleesi herself, who uh, is dealing with her dragons, her kids that she locked up in a fucking basement or <laughs> <laughs> like some cave. That she that was a really cool scene. Did you like that? That was that was a good scare that they got on us. I'm feeling 
I'm feeling usually every Danny scene is like, yes, yes, more yes. She's doing amazing things. And it's finally getting to the point where it's like things are catching up and she's got to like, she's losing a little bit of control. Like her people are not all that grateful any longer about how she freed our city and her dragons are out of control and too big for her to handle now. And it's like, all right, Queen of Dragons can't handle her dragons. One of them's yeah. missing. Uh, I don't like her feeling kind of, you know, like haphazard like that. I want her in control of things. So I hope she figures out maybe somewhere there's a dragon trainer who can give her a hand. I, I don't know how those things work. There's no dragons, and there haven't been for a very long time, but I really want her to get some help on training her dragons. Maybe she should watch the cartoon. Yeah, there's two of those There's two of those movies, so... Yeah, make it help. Learn yeah. from uh, Toothless. Hiccup? Yeah. Hiccup. His name's Hiccup. Hiccup's okay. good. They're yeah. the, the guy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so, yeah, we see her with her dragons, and we also see her interacting with uh, Dario, Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they, I said to my wife, she, I didn't want to say this on this show. Uh, my, my wife said I had to say it. That uh, I think Daenerys and Dario are like the Heidi and Spencer of Game of, Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like way too good looking. They're, I, they're I, really I, pretty. Yeah, and I must admit, I, I think Daenerys' storyline is, I, I did, really isn't my favorite. Uh, in the show, I know I'm in the super minority on that, but uh, I get really I don't know I don't know what it is I can't like just know. recently like since last the whole season, time always. the, the whole, whole time, time? yeah I oh, <laughs> know oh, I liked her at the beginning I liked Daenerys at the beginning oh, yeah um, she's gotten then, a little boring her now that she's like hiding out in the city and not doing as much like I don't know if I I like da- Daenerys on the move like that's the cool right Daenerys but eh, yeah you're right it's a little boring now but. But it's she's okay. getting it on with someone now, right? So. Yeah, and you know, and, and it's cool. You know, what's really weird is, uh, and pretty cool is, I'm actually meeting uh, Miss the guy who plays Dario tomorrow. I'm interviewing him. So, so I'm gonna. The show? No, it's a, he's in Age of Adeline. But oh, is he really? <laughs> yeah, he's in the Blake Lively movie that's coming out. So wow, Blake I'm seeing Lively. him tomorrow, and I'm gonna tell him he's the Spencer <laughs> of Game of Thrones. Spencer he's Pratt. Just getting all the hot blondes. All right, well, that's cool. So, uh, Emily Clark isn't actually blonde in real life, so, oh well. Right, right, and she, she's going to be uh, terminating uh, sometime soon, <laughs> soon here. In the summertime, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, all right, Tyrion. what else happened? What else happened? Tyrion, Tyrion was in a box. Oh. He got let out of his box. Tyrion's in a bad mood. I, <laughs> it's kind of, that happens, and you know what? I haven't seen him in such a bad mood since, like, the first season where he was just drunk all the time and hanging out with, like, whores and brothels and things like that. Right. Um... But Tyrion rises from bad moods pretty well, so I think he will he will rise. He just has to like get over the fact that you know he killed his dad and his girlfriend and he's exiled and life kind of sucks right now. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was, and there was a really cool. Um, it was pretty much Tyrion and Varys uh, uh, throughout what, that whole storyline uh, this episode. And Varys had a really cool, interesting line where uh, Tyrion. Um, they were talking about some type of savior figure or something, and uh, Varys said, I don't believe in saviors, and Tyrion uh, refers to the savior figure as a him, and, and uh, Varys said, who said anything about him? Exactly. I, that was really cool. I, I, that, that's really interesting. I think Varys is becoming a more interesting character with every every appearance. Yeah. I mean, I don't read the books, but it seems like the some woman or the women are going to inherit Westeros, like, in this show. I mean, the guys are going to get stuff, too. Like, like um, I have a little theory about Bran and, and dragons and things like that. But, um, so guys are going to get stuff, too. Jon Snow is obviously going to go someplace amazing. But I think yeah. the ladies are going to take, take the throne eventually. Yeah, you know, just as a quick aside, I mean, I think that's one of the things that kind of makes me... Not me, like I'm a super huge fan of Game of Thrones. I am, but uh, mm-hmm. it makes me proud to be watching the show because the show really treats uh, female characters with respect and, you know, equal equality. Uh, there's equity between the male and female characters in the show, which I think is really cool. There is and there isn't. I mean, like they aren't technically treated with equality, like. Well, in the world of the show, it's a sexist world that they're right. inhabiting. Right, <laughs> but they're, they're up to the challenge. I like that these women are always, like, up for it. Like, they may not always 
be seen as equals in the eyes of their male counterparts, but like they're gonna say f that anyways, and they're yeah. gonna just like, do their thing. So, yeah. Yeah, they're strong, yeah, strong women. Even you know, ever yeah. especially Cersei. But uh, yeah. moving on. Uh, uh, yeah. So we didn't see Arya. She's she's not there, but we did see Sansa. <laughs> so I've got I've got it right here. <laughs> you got it. Except her hair is not that color anymore. Did you notice that she dyed her hair? I know. I know. She looks huh. she looks crazy. But the, yeah, this is my wife's little uh, pop uh, <laughs> doll. figure, pop doll. Um, little little finger was hanging out with Sansa. I think that's one yeah. of the creepiest. He's he's so he's so great. I love I love, I love little finger. He just makes seems... every word he says. Oh, I know. Sansa seems like she's in control. Like she's got some sort of plan here, but I really can't figure out what it is or why. I mean, I guess she doesn't have a whole lot of choice right now for who she's going to be hanging out with. But Littlefinger seems like a real bad idea all the time. Um, <laughs> But she doesn't really know what else is going on in the world. That's the weirdest part is, like, everyone is so separated. There was that scene where Sansa and Littlefinger are, like, driving in the carriage, and they literally cross paths with Brienne, who's looking for Sansa right now. So, <sighs> cell phones, right? They just need some freaking cell phones <laughs> and internet in Westeros, and they'd be way better off. Yeah, there, there's this thing that George and the showrunners do... Uh, where two characters who you are anticipating crossing paths again or for the first time barely miss each other. Yeah. Um, like they're in this very close proximity, but for whatever reason they don't meet up. And it happens so much that it kind of mm -hmm. gets to me as it, it seems a little too manipulative to me, like in a little, like really <laughs> unlikely, like super unlikely to the point where it's like, come on. Come on, man! Like, like this. This is a big yeah. place here. Like, Westeros is a big place. Like, I know. Like, like, how did they, how did Brienne lose Arya? Like, in a vast wasteland. Like, she was just <laughs> running in the hills. Like, uh, and then she didn't turn around to see who's in the carriage. Or I don't know. It just seems, yeah. It's they need a, a Craigslist misconnections in Westeros. <laughs> yeah, 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 they could use that amongst other things. But I think what was interesting about uh, Brienne's scenes with Podrick, uh, which who I always, I always forget Podrick's name, so I always call him Jose. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just think <laughs> that's what came to my mind, Jose. Uh, right. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, Brienne and Podrick is, my wife pointed out that for the first time, it's kind of seems like, uh, before this, Brienne's always kind of been, um, uh, someone who's been driven by duty to somebody or something. And now at this yeah. point, this is the first time we're seeing her just kind of left to her own devices and trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life, in a way. Oh, yeah. She doesn't do well on her own, actually. I mean, in a sense, she wants to be alone, but, like, she she wants someone that she can, like, claim fealty to, and she's a little lost now that there's, like, no battle to ready herself for and no person to, like, claim allegiance for and... I don't know. She just needs to get together. Everyone's a little, a little down right now. That seems to be sort of what's happening. I mean, I guess you got to start on a low note so we can build ourselves up. But um, yeah, I mean, we yeah, forgot to little... mention. Sorry. No. Yeah. I mean, you're going into Jon Snow. I'm assuming, right? Well, I was. Well, I was actually going to mention yeah. that we forgot to mention a uh, Tywin, and that the show opens with his funeral and. Um, Creepy Jamie, eyes. Jamie and Cersei standing over his dead body, which had me worried. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you think was gonna happen? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they've stood next show. to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Ugly Ooh. things have happened. That's but, true. Uh, yeah, but no, you're right. Uh, John Snow's uh, mm -hmm. uh, storyline kind of uh, was the climax of mm -hmm. the episode where that went. Uh, uh, what did you think? I thought the uh, him he John Snow and Mance Raider, uh, Kieran Hines and Kit Harrington had a great scene. Yeah, you know I'm. I love that Jon Snow is so good at having respect for people, and that's great, and he has respect for Mance, and he has respect for, uh, what's his name, uh, Baratheon, Slannis, Slannis, Stannis, Stannis, I'm like, too many names, this show I know, is I know. so hard to remember, um, but I, I kind of want him to, like, stop respecting everyone and just, like, respect himself. And he kind of hinted at that towards the end. And, like, I think he's going to start coming into his own. But Jon Snow is always fighting someone else's battle. And it's, oh, gosh, he just needs to fight his own pretty soon. But, um, you know, Night Watch and loyalty and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, 
he's he's a leader. He's a born leader, and he needs to own it. And he will, obviously, he will. But uh, I'm starting to get a little bored of like, I mean, he was basically the middleman the whole episode, right? And a lot of good it really did. So uh, I hope things turn out better, and he just takes charge for once. Yeah, I think, you know, everyone's kind of, that's one of the things that's kind of building. A lot of things are building in this show, have been building for all, you know, four seasons long. And I think the, one of the big things is that Jon Snow is clearly one of the, he and Brienne are probably the purest hearted people in, in the whole show. They're very heroic uh, figures, yeah. and we kind of want them to get what they deserve. It sounds bad, but get what they deserve. You know, they they deserve in a good way. Things. Yeah, yeah, they deserve good things. And I think Jon Snow. What's every t at the end of this episode where he kind of saves uh, Mance Raider? He does. He saves Mance Raider from torture, yeah. um, terrible pain. I think he's just uh, you know every time he does a heroic act, I just I just gain more affection for this character. I love Jon Snow so it's hard not to like because he's such a. It's not like he's a complex character. He's very he's very pure. Like he, he's easy oh, to yeah. explain. He's a hero. But I just it's him in this world of Game of Thrones where everyone's kind of a snake. Um, he's kind of like a breath of fresh air every time you see him. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he's a fan. Everyone's favorite, right? Fan favorite across the yeah. board. So. I think him and Tyrion are pro probably mm -hmm. the two main ones. Uh, Tyrion. That's crazy. true. <laughs> Tyrion's so he's so funny. Like he, uh -huh. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not, and it's. I don't mean that you know because Peter Dinklage is a is a small person, but uh, uh, it's just uh, his the way he insults people is, <laughs> is he does it almost as as good as Cersei. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he's. I I think everyone. I I know that this is the only time I'll reference the books because I I've not read them and I don't want to yet, but. I know that in the books he's a little bit meaner and he's a little bit uglier, and I think that they did a good thing in, in the show by like making him a little bit more lovable, like lovably gruff, you know, um, and still badass. And he's obviously got his own um, set of convictions that he's like stuck to, and he's never know. wavered. Like he's never yeah. wavered from his his values and um you know he was tasked in this episode with convincing Mance Raider to let his people serve Stannis Baratheon in taking back the north and uh you know uh, he I think he admired that Mance stuck to his guns. Mm -hmm. so, and I think he had, you know he really he likes Mance Raider. So I think I, I think when he shot that arrow which is like there's a lot of arrow shooting around the wall into people's chests <laughs> but uh, but uh, when he did that I, I just I really, man, I my affection for that character is just so so big at this point. I really love Jon Snow. Yeah, totally. All right, what do you think is going to happen this season? I have no fucking idea, man. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm so lost. I get so confused about. It. I forget who people are and like where they're yeah. from, what family they belong to. Uh, I'm still kind of getting my bearings since I haven't been in it for so long. But how about you? I think Stannis is going to be a lead um, since he's, you know. On the on the war path, and he's really like gained momentum, and he's like finally like kind of closer to King's Landing now. Um, I think, I think, I think Daenerys is going to have a little, few more difficulties, but I'm really excited at the prospect of her and Tyrion meeting yeah, and getting finally. together. Oh my gosh, she's never really met anybody from no. the crowd. You know, she's been are separate. you totally separate? So this is really exciting, um, and that Varys is going to like set all this stuff up and. Um, yeah, no clue where Sansa and Littlefinger are going with things. That's a little <laughs> unclear right now. And Arya, didn't even see her this episode, but she's probably going to go off and learn how to be some great warrior and then come back, I have a feeling. But John, I think, is probably going to stick with Stannis and, like, follow where that goes, but I hope he breaks free sometime soon. And does see, I mean, I think Stannis is probably going to want to get some retribution for what John did in front of everybody. Um, yeah, I, they're I think, gonna oh, they're gonna they're gonna clash. You just know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's gonna be great. I, I'm really excited. I think I know that uh, this is gonna be a big season for Cersei. Um, that's what, oh, what that's everyone's true. been talking about. So I'm excited to see that because Lena Headey is is really fantastic. She's she's one of the main reasons I love this show. I mean, every her she every scene I see her. She's just so interesting and and uh, delivers lines in ways you don't expect, <laughs> and oh, delivers great. looks you don't expect. I mean, it's it's really it's really great watching her. Sadly, not enough Jamie in this episode, but there's so many characters. What are you gonna do? Not enough Jamie. No um, Arya. No Arya. Bran's and gone no the whole season. Brienne. Is he really? <laughs> yeah, the whole season. They said that already. Mm -hmm. 
I knew he, in the books, like, takes kind of a big old break. That sucks, because things were real exciting in the end of last season for him, and... Well, where they ended last season with Bran's story is actually ahead of the books. Yeah, I, I, I someone yourself. told me that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I also knew that. So there's I nothing. Keep it going. I want to see him. Yeah. Can't they just hang out with him? I know. So, uh, yeah, I am. It should be fun. I, you know, I have a feeling if I have to make some sort of prediction, I think, even though it's going to be all about Cersei, I think it's going to be all about Cersei because I don't know that she's gonna. I don't think she's gonna survive this season. Yeah, She's and it's interesting because neither of us have read the books. <laughs> no, I have no idea. I have no clue if I'm right or wrong. But if I had to guess, she's just getting too too upset, you know, about everything. She's too angry. And I don't know, once you start to get that angry and that vengeful, someone's going to fight back and you may not survive it. So, And they are not afraid to take out important people in this show. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they'll take it. You never know. You know, there's a high, you know, high stakes at all times. But what would you, as an overall, what would you say? What are your impressions of this episode? How'd you enjoy it? I think it was pretty on point for Game of Thrones, and especially for a premiere. Like nothing, they don't rock the boat till usually about what the third episode or so, and that's when like big things happen and you know things are get a little bit crazy. Um, I anticipate that. But as far as like catching up with where people are now, I thought they did a pretty decent job and sort of setting up like. Like I said, like everybody was depressed, everybody was at a low point, which is great because then they only have up to go from there. So I think it's good. Yeah, I enjoyed the episode as well. I think it was like like you said, a typical kind of foundation building episode for the mm -hmm. season, and uh, it was good to catch up with these characters, like you said. Um, I also the one thing I noticed was, um, at the beginning, one of the big problems I had with Game of Thrones is that we never, because of their limited budget, we never really got like. S swooping geography shots of, like, King's Landing or some of the bigger cities um, to get kind of... I, whenever we were at King's Landing, it always felt like we were just in that same building, and we never got a the sense palace. of, like... Yeah, the palace. We never got okay. a sense of, like, the street-level stuff going on in that city. So Sometimes. it kind of felt a little suffocating. We got a couple things, like when Joffrey Marjorie. would go out there and yeah. Marjorie... Um, and meet the people, but I, 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 this episode was cool because they, it's they clearly have more money because there's that great <laughs> shot of that monument being pulled down from the pyramid at a marine that was mm -hmm. fantastic. I was like, wow, this feels epic. Like I feel like this is a fantasy show. I would love to see more epic things like that. Um, and that yeah. was great. And the dragons looked better than I've ever seen them. The CGI on those were terrific. Totally. Dragons yeah. didn't look so great when they first appeared, <laughs> but, um, uh, but now they look they look better and better every time we see them. So I would say, yeah, I, I enjoyed this episode as well. Uh, anybody watching this on YouTube, let us what you know thought of the ep let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments below. Uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Check out waytoindy.com where we're going to be rolling out more television coverage, which we're really excited about providing for you guys. And uh, Ananda, let's end this off with Twitter stuff. Where can we find you on Twitter? Twitter. On um, YouTube. Um, I can be found at Ananda Writes on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I am at BJ underscore Boo on Twitter. Uh, I forgot to mention you can also like us on Facebook and uh, find all of our all of our updates and stuff on there as well. Thank you for joining us on Way Too Indie Reacts. Uh, we're going with that name for now. <laughs> and, uh, I like it. Let's yeah, it. I think it's cool. I think I, I think it's cool. So we'll see you next time uh, for uh, perhaps another episode of Game of Thrones. Let's see, maybe uh, episode three, huh? Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye.